Hi, I'm Michael Rosenbaum for the BJ.com, and today I want to talk to you about something that's very important in this time of COVID-19 and the danger of the virus and the difficulty of going outside. And if you're a video journalist or an MMJ or a Mojo or a television reporter, <laughs> you have to go into contact with your stories. I mean, print journalists can work from home, radio journalists can work from home because they work the phones. But if you want to be a video journalist or an MMJ, it means you have to actually physically go into somebody's house or their office or a place where stories are happening, and that's dangerous. So there's a great question of how do we cover stories, how do we do journalism, but how do we stay safe at the same time? And I'm going to come up with, I think I've got a pretty good idea on this, and I'm going to show you an example of how it works. It's a very radical idea. I'm not talking about selfie sticks, and I'm not talking about zooming in and staying, you know, 20 feet away from your subject and having somebody else hold the boom mic, to me it's still dangerous. You go into somebody's house, there's surface areas you're going to touch, there's, who knows what's in the air, somebody coughs on you. It's a, very, it's, it's a very, very dangerous business. And so how do we produce quality journalism, quality video journalism, great stories that people want to look at, accurate stories, and how do we do it without putting ourselves in physical danger every time we do it? So, I came up with this idea, and I've been working with uh, a couple of journalists, particularly in Spectrum One, which is a, a network we've been working with for a couple of years. And so instead of their going out to do a story, I said, let's have the participants shoot their part of the story on their own. Of course, everybody today has got an iPhone or a smartphone. They all shoot 4K. They're all broadcast quality. Most of what we do with our MMJs, we do with iPhones anyway. And since everybody has these phones with a little bit of instruction, People who are subjects of your stories can actually be taught and directed and helped over the course of time through a phone or through Skype or something else to actually shoot the component of the story that takes place in their own home. Let me show you an example. This is by an MMJ in Spectrum 1 in Los Angeles called Ite Had, who, um, Ite Had, who um, uh, he produced this entire news story for Spectrum 1 LA and he did it completely without leaving home, which is pretty remarkable. So let's take a look at the piece. COVID-19 has forced millions of Americans into their homes and caused an epidemic of boredom. But people are finding creative ways of getting out and about without ever leaving their front door. I'm Itai Had. Come and meet a group of friends that's turned drinking alone into a much better party. David Reddish is all dressed up with somewhere to go, despite being under lockdown. He's pulled out his 70s vintage disco shirt. I got it this winter and was looking forward to a party season this spring uh, where I could kind of sport it. But since that's not happening, I'm doing the next best thing. And poured a pina colada, all in prep for his night on the town, straight from his living room. David is among the millions hosting virtual happy hours. Only his friends are a group of self-described geeks who work in the entertainment biz, an industry that's been particularly hard hit. I was truly shocked. Everybody was so ecstatic, uh, so excited to be able to do something. The RSVP was the easy part because virtual happy hours at first can be kind of annoying. Hello? Hi. Dad, I can, I can I hear, hear you, but not see you. As the world adapts to this new normal, friends and co-workers are using video conferencing to cut through the loneliness and check up on each other. And yeah, it ain't perfect. It's not just like, oh, we all talk. Like, there, there's kind of a knack to it. Randy, I love those headphones. In order to avoid mayhem, David moderates the party. Okay, so has everybody seen Dr. Sleep? But no matter the rules of this virtual shindig, Round one is off to a rough start. I still feel like I'm in my house drinking by myself, looking at a screen. And yet, there's no denying this works. <laughs> a sense of community pops through the pixels. It is definitely different. Um, I mean, it's, it's the best we can do right now. It is a facsimile of connectivity. It may not be the perfect substitute for a disco and a DJ, but for these five friends, it truly is the next best thing. This is not something that I would want to make a habit, but unfortunately, this is what has to happen. At least until they once again can raise a glass in person. Cheers. To keep their spirits high. Cheers. Okay, so when you see his story, you see it, it's shot beautifully, those close-up shots of the Scots going in the 
the glass, the ice cubes, people walking around in their kitchens and stuff like that. It isn't that hard to do, but he did it by instructing the um, participants of the story to shoot their own footage with his instruction. Then he took the footage back, he edited the story together, he wrote the script, he did the interview on Skype, as you saw before, but he made a pretty coherent story. We can do this a lot. We can do this a lot because people at home already have all the gear that they need if they have a smartphone or an iPhone, and almost everybody does. What they need is some direction and some instruction. And of course, that's what we can do at the VJ.com. We have instructional videos, and, and then giving them just a few basic pointers about how to shoot the five-shot system, things like that, hold it horizontally, get sequences. Most people have seen movies already. They know what it's supposed to look like. This works, and I think it can work for him, and it can work for you. And if you're interested in trying it, give me a shout, and I'll talk to you about exactly how this can be done. It's very safe. It produces great pieces, and in a weird way, a more intimate pieces because now the subject of the story also participates in the creation of telling their own story, which I think is a very positive step forward. So I call this hybrid journalism. The journalist plus the subject working together to make the piece. I think it works.